To start with, even before we get to you know the points that I want to talk about, can we please have a clip uh, played just to set the context right on you know where I'm coming from, what we do? Yeah. There was quite a bit of fun and banter. I'm sure most of you, you know, have gone through the video yourself. Yeah, so uh, a, a little bit of a recap. Firstly, give me a cheer. How many of you have watched our episode of Shark Tank? Quite, quite a few of you. And hopefully, you know, that's also how you got to know about Team Altor and myself, right? So we'll jump into this major question that sort of I'm trying to answer today. That, you know, how can someone from an ordinary Indian middle class background build global products and build solutions to global problems? Right. So before we get there, I think one of the key things I want to highlight is, uh, you know, in, in today's world, we, we all are exposed to so many sorts of influences, right? And it's so easy to often feel different that I am different from him, we are different from them. But fundamentally, if you go down and you sort of deep dive, you realize that the core human motivations, the core understanding, the core sensibilities are more often than not very, very similar, right? Across the globe, across, you know, countries. So I would try to highlight those factors as much as I can in this whole uh, you know, session on how we exactly can tackle global problems. And the first bit of it is getting prepped up yourself and sort of trying to you know, uh, understand that what needs to be done from your end. So in order to go there, I'll take you back a little bit, you know, a few years back, back before all of this whole Altor and all of our entrepreneurial journey started. So right from school, you know, I was always a very ordinary middle class kid. I just want to put it out there that I had done nothing special. Okay. And by that, I mean, you know, my parents had asked me simply that you study properly, you'll get good marks. I just kept doing that. Of course, I enjoyed the process as well. But that is something that most of my uh, school life sort of, you know, encircled. And I happened to get good grades for that, of course. So I remember, I think from class 5 to 12, the period for which we were graded, I always used to consistently come first in class. Not that it matters in any way. Let, let me put that out also. But it gives you an occasional, you know, sense of confidence boost when you are at a low time. But that's about it. There was nothing more to show for. Similarly, once my school life ended, you know, there was this inherent drive within me to try something related to maths or physics or astronomy. But, you know, sort of the reality check happened when I had this conversation with my dad that, you know, I want to do these, these. And he said, no, you'll have to do engineering. Why? Because, you know, we need you to get a job as soon as you can. You know, we need you to support the family to sort of do well for yourself. And so I enrolled into this engineering pathway. And it was just like one of the 20 lakh engineers that, you know, get into engineering colleges every single year. But I always had this sort of a, you know, a, a peculiar belief that, you know, I am different. I want to do something that will make me stand out from the crowd, that will, you know, not make me be a part of that whole common race where everyone is doing everything in a certain flow just to get to certain predefined results. The reason I say peculiar is that this belief had no backdrop, as I said, right? So there was no, uh, there was no context. I hadn't done anything prodigious before. But that belief was there. Why I bring this out is, of course, I feel at least some of you in this room would be having a similar belief inside you, right? That, you know, I, I want to be different. I want to try something different. Now, it's very easy to discard that by simply saying, no, it's just stupid. You know, everyone has that. But no, it's not stupid. 
If it was stupid, I wouldn't be standing here today and you know telling you all of this. So there is a good use to it. So first things first, if you have that belief within you, please hold it very close to your heart while I tell you the rest of the story. Now, first year in college, I'm sure all of you because you know you are already in your journey. It's pretty similar for all of us, and same was with me, right? It's mostly fun and games, chilling with friends, you know, vibing in with this newfound freedom. You know, because till class 12, I'm sure most of us have, you know, sort of grown up in a very restricted and protected environment. So it's a good, uh, you know, new life, new air that we get in college first year. And along with that, I started, you know, learning more and more about tech products. And I also acknowledged that I have this thing for learning, right? I have this knack for finding more about things. And even in school, as I said, so I was a student who used to be as excited about history, geography, literature as for maths, physics and, you know, the science subjects. So there was this enjoyment attached and that got me more and more into, you know, exploring tech products. And by the time I reached my second year, I also started developing some rudimentary ideas on how tech businesses function. Of course, at a very rudimentary level, right? And, you know, once once these things uh, sort of, you know, started coming in and, uh, you know, I realized that the, I'm developing a set of uneasiness, that there is something I needed to do with all the knowledge and everything that was coming in to express those knowledges in a practical sense. And what did I do? The most unique thing, right? Looking for an internship. No, no that's not the unique part. But I really uh, tried to make sure that I tried to crack one of the top institutions, uh, an, uh, an internship opportunity there. And after facing close to 80 plus rejections, like literally every professor I mailed out to didn't reply and sort of rejected with a sorry, there's no opening. But I got one response and I really pursued that response very, very strongly. Like, so it's like wooing a girl who has no interest in you, who doesn't care, you know, what, what you are, who you are, what you want to do. But you still have to keep at it, right? You constantly will have to give everything you can to, to impress and to try to make a mark and you hope that eventually it does. So for me it did and that opportunity really turned out to be a very fruitful one. So I stayed on campus at IIT Bombay for six months for this whole internship experience and that completely transformed me, right? So that's the first time from a tier to college I was getting exposed to what a premium institution looks like for engineering in the country and the discussions there were outstanding, right? So people were talking about how new products are built, how new ecosystems are developed. And by then already Ola had, you know, started growing very big. And it was an IIT Bombay alumni um, who, who started this. So there was this whole drive around entrepreneurship. I saw how entrepreneurship sells work, how they nurture talents and, you know, how these things are done in practical. So that completely helped me, you know, get a good base and sort of set a good base for uh, what I wanted to do next. The reason I bring this up in this fashion is, and there is a bit of detail that I go to, it's because, you know, I'm sure all of you, if not, you know, uh, if not all, I'm sure most of you have gone through entrepreneurial contents in YouTube, right? There are great founders, successful entrepreneurs putting in these contents. I'm sure, you know, like some uh, stalwarts like Ankur Wariku has entered all of your homes, I'm pretty much sure, like through the videos with the whole plethora of uh, use cases that he brings in. It's all good, but the only issue I have is when someone compares something in progress. So all of you, right, you're in college and I take this as an in progress journey. So if you compare something in progress with an end outcome of a successful entrepreneur, it becomes a very unfair comparison and there is a fundamental flaw there. So thereby relatable journeys, if you get to hear that, it's easier for you to think that, okay, say for a very meager example of a successful Shark Tank funding, you can realize that, you know, if you are at that stage where I was six years ago, it would be easy for you to recognize that, okay, I'm here right now. This is where I need to go to. And this is the sort of effort that comes in between. Now, trust me, if you actually do that in six years time, you'd achieve way more than a simple Shark Tank funding. And that's for sure, like something that I can absolutely, you know, vouch for. The other things that played on as an inspiration for me were some very good TV shows. Again, I want to name them because it may seem relatable. One of them is TVF Pictures. I'm sure all of you know, it's a very famous Indian show for entrepreneurship. And also Silicon Valley. These two particular shows got me thinking. And you know the fun part? So I realized that I am excited not just by the good bits that was shown there, but also by the hardships that were shown in, the, in, the, in those series. And that's one point, if you feel the same about anything else, it should be a good, you know, uh, sort of a nudge for you to think 
that you are really ready to deep dive into that subject when the hardships excite you as much as the good parts right so that's sort of how you know we uh, jumped into this inspiration game and by that time i already had a friend circle i think it's very important you know because no matter what everyone tells you please don't compromise the fun of your college life your friends for anything else because even if you start working for something a little later this is what you will hold close to yourself for the rest of your lives see even i had pretty good friends in college and one of those circle centered around discussions of entrepreneurship of startups and all my co-founders are a part of that circle so back from back then only we had started uh, you know discussing things exchanging material and so on now uh, there is one of our friends who was a part of that group and who we lost actually in a two wheeler accident and i have mentioned about this in our episode as well so that was a traumatic experience and you know something of a shell shocker for us so at this point if you have paid attention to what i was saying you'd realize that everything was sort of coming together right the inspirations the iit bombay experience the urge to be different and at the same time now the identification of a problem that is absolutely global in nature and that can affect every single human being so i remember upon these contexts and these backdrops i one day had an extensive phone call with my now co-founder and a long friend shayon and you know started telling him that about how we can develop something of a smart helmet that can detect accidents and that can actually save lives and we also did some research on what other works were being done you know at that time how other solutions were being built and you know we sort of started deep diving into it now as an idea this was pretty good and we all know whenever we get an idea there's an instant dopamine hit we feel brilliant right oh god i've done the best thing i could but immediately after that comes the hardships of execution and trust me guys ideas are useless without executions right all of us have ideas but what really matters is how we are going into execution and when you start execution I again bring this up because i'm sure this happens to all of you you start feeling dizzy at first you feel like you can't see much there's a cloud there's a haze in front of you that's blocking your vision but trust me it happens with everyone for everything that they're trying to do right and this is so common that even the most successful people in this universe have gone through this phase so when you are at that phase do not give up do not make the mistake of giving up even though your brain asks you to do so the win here is if you can survive and if you can continue doing it because just as this hazy bad time there would also very soon come a good time when these ideas would start flowing naturally to you right and you would be able to execute better so we went through that that phase and we really put in the hard hours and the effort and by that time my other two co-founders bilal and anirban also joined in the team and you know then we sort of developed our first prototype i would like to show you a picture of it yeah so we really thought that this was the best engineering marvel that could come out of you know uh, a college but it's it's really silly as you can see but i'll tell you still a little uh, bit more about the perseverance journey that while we were making this we also got to know about a competition that that's a very prestigious one it's called india innovation challenge because it's organized by texas instruments and iim bangalore and with this prototype right as funny as it may seem with this prototype and with our efforts we made it to the finals in that year of that competition well now the the criteria for i i am bangalore incubation was that you know you would first have to drop out of your fourth year in engineering college and then you would have to be incubated with i am bangalore to take the startup forward so that's a brilliant proposition right for us we were overjoyed that we'll stay in a different city we won't have to who who loves going to college in any way in fourth year for engineering but i'm not talking about you guys it's just for engineers in particular but it was a very exciting proposition we could explore the world we wanted to explore with something we have built but again fate had some other plans so we were convinced our college director was convinced but then came the challenge of convincing our parents so i remember our college director doing a phone call with my dad and you know asking him that you know can your son drop out of college where he he will still get the degree probably but he won't be able to sit for placements and there were some other problems and my dad just had one word no that's it and we all know indian dads are not that good at giving explanations later on so it's a no that's it and you have to listen to it so it all came crashing down all our thoughts all our hopes that we would be able to continue with this but again that was a point where we could have given up but rather all of us we thought no we know this is something we'll continue let's use this one year the whole fourth year in collecting user feedback and in making the prototype better 
So that entire fourth year, we kept talking to users, collecting feedback from them, understanding what the problems were, how much money they were ready to pay and so on and so forth, right? And in hindsight, that was probably the most important year for us. And the insights are helping us even today. Now, once our you know engineering got completed, we, we got graduated. We sort of went in with this with the improved version of this one and definitely an improved version of this one for sure, I can tell you. So we went ahead with that and we applied for the same competition. We were very sure everything is same, right? We are same, the product is same, it's even better rather. That we'll definitely make it this time, then I, I am Bangalore incubation, a proper pathway, all fun, right? Lo and behold, surprise, everything went the same, but this year we did not make it to the finals. And now we were four engineers having given up all our job opportunities. So each of us had probably gotten three offers each. So 12 job opportunities given away. And now the only pathway we were looking, you know, as a hope is now gone, right? That's a, that was in hindsight a very important juncture where we easily could have given up and we could have said, you know, this is not for us, you know, let's just leave it, let's go to something else. But we were like, again, no, if we have come this far, we will not give up. We will keep persevering no matter what. And everyone told us to not do it, but shamelessly, we just went into our college director, our college board and asked that, sir, we need some help. We need some grants, some money to start the process out because it's a hardware business. You need for product development, some degree of lab support, right? And to our biggest surprise, for the first time in our history of our college, we were given a grant to start our own startup, right? And in hindsight, not a big amount of money, but back then it was huge for us. And that really got the ball rolling for us. And then, you know, we were, we were mostly, you know, sort of uh, working our way in. And I can tell you from that day till today, it's been a constant journey of survival, of perseverance, right? Everything you hear about cold sweats, manic attacks, you know, uh, fear of how you will pay your employees when you don't have sufficient cash, all of it is real. If you are jumping into this game of, you know, making something big, making something big for the world, you would have to take this as a part of the journey. And right now, from that point, we are at a stage where we are really building multiple products and solutions. And we have interest not just from all parts of India, but literally all parts of the globe at this point of time. And thereby I can say that Altor is truly working for a global vision, right? To solve global problems. And we are taking the right steps at that. So if I have to summarize it for all of you, there would be five major points, right? That you have to keep in mind. Number one, get yourself prepped up and build a proper founding team. You know, I have a lot of respect for solo founders, but I genuinely feel if you can get a good founding team set right at the start, it not only gives you confidence, it also sets the context right for bigger things to happen down the line. Number one, get prepped up, build a great founding team. Number two, collect a lot of feedback, right, from, uh, from users, from prospective customers. Number three, identify and narrow down on the problem that's truly global in nature that mostly caters to human emotions, human sentiments, human understanding, and not, you know, necessarily limit itself to geographical boundaries. Number three, be flexible enough to survive. There will be so many survival threats for you in this entire journey, if you're at least starting from the level where we started, that it can almost kill you, but you have to survive. That is the entire game. Last, persevere, persevere, persevere. If you follow these five points in whatever order as it suits you, you would be surprised to see what wonders they would bring to you. And the world is actually waiting with open arms for India and Indian products to go global, right? And the stage is absolutely set for all of you. Thank you so much. Um.